Game parameters, also known as real-time parameter controls, or RTPCs, are used when you want a sound to react to any type of information that varies over a numerical range. Game parameters could represent the speed or RPM of a car, mission completion percentage, or even the time of day. In this example, we have a sound of a player's heartbeat already imported as a sound SFX object. The loop property has been set to infinite so that the sound will play indefinitely. In the game, we'll use a game parameter to make the heartbeat's volume increase as the player's health deteriorates. This will serve as a nice audible cue to the player that they'll need to be careful or they'll uh, soon meet their demise. Similar to event objects, game parameter objects receive information coming from the game engine. So we'll start by creating a game parameter that corresponds with player health. Select the game syncs tab, and then within the game parameters folder, click the default work unit. Then click the create new game parameter icon. The name must perfectly match the name of the call being received from the game engine. In this case, player health. Game parameters communicate a value as a number within a defined range. Select the player health game parameter and you'll see where you can define this range in the property editor. The default range has a minimum value of zero and a maximum value of 100. This just coincidentally happens to be the same value range used in the game for player health, so there's no need for us to make a change to this property setting. You should, however, define a default value so that if the game doesn't communicate this information, Wise knows a value to start with. The player starts at full health, so we'll change the default value to 100. So now we need to connect the player health game parameter to the heartbeat sound. Go back to the audio tab, choose the heartbeat sound SFX object, and then click the RTPC tab in the sound property editor. We begin by first choosing which property we want to manipulate. Click the selector button, and then in this case, we're gonna work with voice volume. Once you've selected the property you wanna manipulate, next, you're going to choose what you wanna manipulate it with. You now choose a new selector button that appears to the right. And in this case, we can choose game parameters and player health. You've now mapped a game parameter to the heartbeat's voice volume property, and you'll see a graph where the X axis shows player health and the Y axis indicates the heartbeat's voice volume. The diagonal red line is referred to as an RTPC curve, and it's currently showing that when the player's health is at zero, the heartbeat's voice volume will be at minus 200 dB, or basically inaudible. The voice volume will reach 0 dB, or full volume, when player health reaches 100. This is the exact opposite effect of what we're trying to achieve. We can change this by using the control points on either side of the RTPC curve. You can drag RTPC curve uh, control points wherever you like, or you can enter specific values within the coordinates property area. Now in this case, I don't want the sound of the heartbeat to be heard until the player health falls below 50. By double clicking on the RTPC curve, you can add additional control points that can be further adjusted. In some cases, a linear transition doesn't provide the smooth effect that we're looking for. So you can right click on an RTPC curve and then choose the type of curve that you're looking for. It's very difficult to know exactly how to set an RTPC curve without listening to how it's going to impact the sound it's affecting. For this, WISE provides an ability to simulate changes in a game parameter's value so that you can hear its effect in real time. In this case, we'll simply play the heartbeat object, and it is playing, and if you remember, it's set to infinitely loop. The reason we're not hearing the sound is because according to the player health, a value of 50 will produce no volume. If I drag the game parameter cursor to the right, again, we don't hear any volume. But if I drag it to the left and we simulate the player's health falling below 50, the heartbeat sound gradually fades in. If I restore the player's health and I move the game parameter cursor to the right, the sound fades away. Now, in some cases, we may not be looking at an RTPC graph. So down in the transport control, 
you can click the RTPCs button and any game parameters associated with that object will be displayed. Here we see the player health value is at a value of 70. I can grab this value here, drag it to the left or right, and it's the same as moving the game parameter cursor in the RTPC graph. 